I'm here at World of Concrete. Man, this event is huge. It's so cool to finally be able to get to events like this in person again. I never really was able to go to stuff like this since starting my YouTube channel two years ago. I really got started after COVID. And so this is the first time I'm able to meet people. It's crazy, at World of Concrete, I'm actually getting recognized by some people, which has never really happened before, but when you get enough like-minded individuals in the same place, I guess they kind of come from the same circles. I wanted to show you guys this because I was just at the SpaceX facility the other day. This is the Boring Company. They're currently taking dirt out of the ground beneath us in order to make one of Elon's uh, tunnels, like a Hyperloop tunnel, but instead of a Hyperloop, it's just going to be an underground highway. Uh, there's a thing here, you've probably seen on other channels, you could take the Tesla through this underground tunnel built by the Boring Company. What makes it so great is the speed that they're able to dig is like a hundred times faster than any other digging apparatus was doing in the past. This video is sponsored by Ventures Equipment, but more on that later. This channel has always been primarily focused on 3D printed construction, but I'm interested in all kinds of construction automation, like this mule tool that is assisted lifting of CMU blocks. This reduces a lot of the physical strain on the human body when building concrete structures out of cinder block. Apparently the system was a little bit hit or miss, but that is the law of engineering demonstrations. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong, and when there's an audience, for some reason, things become a little more likely to have issues. Most companies don't have enough confidence in their technology to do live demonstrations like this at World of Concrete. Well, there are some that do, and we have videos of that coming up for you next week. Here's a look at a concrete forming device that makes it easy to make curbs. It's quite a bit more rudimentary than a 3D concrete printer. However, it still involves automation as opposed to smoothing it out by hand. Ideally in the future, a device like this would be self-feeding so that you wouldn't require a person feeding it with a shovel. Another awesome part of the World of Concrete 2022 event was the SpecMix 500 competition. For some reason initially, I thought this was a man versus robot competition, but it's actually just a competition between masons to build the fastest walls to the parameters set by the competition. Here's where they were mixing all of the mortar they were using for the block. One day, I envision that competition will include at least one robotic competitor. This event also had a Hilti J-Bot in attendance. In the past, I did a YouTube video on this equipment, so it's cool to see it now in person. Check out my other video on how this device is able to drill on the job site and record data in real time. I also got a chance to do an interview with a company specializing in automated demolition equipment. Check that out. So this is a, it's a, it's a hydro demolition robot. Uh, and basically what this does is that you put high pressure water into this, in this robot. So you're going to need another power pack or a pump that pushes the high pressure water through it. And what that does is that this removes uh, the damaged concrete. It, it's being removed while at the same time it cleans up the rebars. Uh, it doesn't cause any micro cracks. So it, it removes the bad concrete and it leaves the good concrete behind. It creates a a perfect adhesion for, for new concrete. Now, the benefit of this, especially for parking garages, bridges, dams, and so forth, is the fact that you don't do any damage to the actual structure, and you're gonna have a longer life uh, uh, length on, on the structure once once you put new concrete in there. So it's all with water, so there's no, uh, no dust or anything like that, and the robot is incredibly versatile because of its arm, you're able to go from a horizontal cut to a vertical cut to an overhead cut and even below the tracks without having to do any modifications. That's pretty crazy. How much does it cost? Well, this, you know, we, we can work that out, but you know, you, you'll be in the region of about 220 to 240, depending on how many bits and pieces that you want to add and, and so forth. And but, that replaces a crew of how many guys? So for an example, this is 25 times more effective than jackhammers. So, and, and one person could run the equipment, both the, both the robot and the pump. So one person with the remote control can control both the water and the robot at the same time. The only thing that you might need labor for or help with is the cleanup afterwards. Uh, but, but 
just running the equipment, one one to two people is, is, is more than enough to take care of. Sure. So this basically breaks the concrete into chunks that you can just move out of there, right? You can move out, use a bobcat with some brushes on it, remove it, and, and, and get going. If somebody's interested, wants to get in touch with you, how do they reach out? Uh, Conjet.com is, is the website, and you got all the contact details and everything on there for, for the whole team. Myself included. <laughs> Ventures Equipment provides this silo mixer pump solution. Check out that massive rotor stator. This offers an array of benefits, not just for 3D printed concrete, but also for other types of specialty concrete mixes like self-leveling. All kinds of mortars can be run through this system, and we'll have a dedicated video coming soon with more explanation behind the sensors in this equipment. That company, Conjet, has been in business for over a decade, so it's not like automation is just finding its place in the world of construction. Here's the tunnel built by the boring company that I used to get from the outdoor location to the central hall. The first day I walked this, and it's probably about a third of a mile, taking between 7 and 10 minutes. In the Tesla, it takes about one minute, as you can see the whole video from start to finish in the tunnel here. At the event, there were some 3D printed construction companies and there were also startups that are either considering purchasing a concrete printer or have already bought one. Some had theirs on site. We'll see a couple of those interviews now and then in a week or two when I release the video of the Kobod live print, I'll also include an interview with their team member Philip. So make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the future content I've got coming for you. Uh, I am Riley Stevens from Austin, Texas. I'm a prospective 3D printer buyer. Uh, I'm in the market because I find it massively intriguing and uh, uh, you know as a potential solution for a lot of different issues. So I tend to be a spatial thinker and so when I take a topic on I start to look at it in a lot of different angles and, and try to chase those possible potential variables down. So I started looking at VR technology and what I could do uh, with a sculptural concept to create something interesting. And that turned into working with um, you know, 3D printing and, and what are the potentials for residential or commercial uh, sustainability. Uh, but also disaster proof kind of concept. So, you know, I've been at this uh, World of Concrete convention. There's several different manufacturers. It's interesting because I was approached by manufacturers that I didn't know existed. Uh, and as well as, you know, kind of getting more information about the more well established players that uh, I've been in, in talks with currently. Uh, yeah. And what do you think about the uh, display here? So the display is excellent. I have already done a tremendous amount of research on this unit, a lot of it through your website on YouTube, uh, which led me to, you know, like investigating uh, scalability, like what, what, what unit is gonna be the most effective to be able to deploy in the field now and, and have a finished product that is awesome, not substandard. So a lot of what I've seen from this company has come out really good in the European market, where it seems like it's more there's more quality control, uh, more experienced operators. A lot of the stuff that I saw in the U.S. was not a quality that I would be comfortable with, uh, and I think a lot of that was environmental and experiential, like how much experience I've had with the machine, but also warmer climates, drier climates that uh, have affected this process. And so one of the, the probably the biggest thing that I've learned this weekend is it's not just about the machine, it's really the material. And while this is probably the most developed machine commercially available right now, so much of the process and the product is related to the material, whether it's you know a, a, a pre-mixed, far more expensive thing that could be supported by richer people that have an interest in selling expensive stuff or a really, really simple combination of gravel and sand with some kind of aggregate that makes it work through a 3D printer. And that's that's really what I found is, you know, the analogy I was using is, if you have a trucking company, your, your product isn't trucks, it's getting material from one point to another point to satisfy a client. And you can't do it without trucks, but the product is really the key to the shipping business. 
similar here, the material is as vital or maybe more vital than the actual machine that you're using, but the machine has to apply it. So th that's, that's what I'm looking at right now is how, how to get the, the best product out of the materials that are available where I live or where I want to produce and with the equipment that's available. Uh, I've actually got to give a lot of credit to our journalist and his research is, is kind of what led me to this point. So the more I learned about it, the more I delved into it, the richer source of information his YouTube channel has become. So you know, I was able to look at different uh, aspects from various companies, materials, processes, and that led me into looking at uh, you know the viability of this as a um, a commercial venture. You know, like a like a is this something that we could do that would make a better home quicker, more sustainably, possibly more affordably? That would be really exciting. Cool. So I'm Justin D'Angelo. I'm the CEO of Printed Patio. I'm Cody Gatz, I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Print Patio. And we're here to mainly check out the 3D printed concrete uh, exhibits. And World of Concrete's been awesome for that this year. Um, it's a really emerging industry and it's exciting to be a part of. You see the demos happening, you see the fo other folks in the industry like Sika and Quickcrete. And it's just an all around good experience. Yeah, um, the, the relationships we build here will be lasting. I think that's one of the biggest takeaways is meeting people in person, building a relationship, and seeing where things can blossom. Yeah. As an emerging industry, coming together is great, and Walla Concrete brought us all together, so it's good stuff. I am Rob Portill, and one of the principals in WePrintHomes.com, and this is our machine, so we've been here the last three days printing, and we're not here selling Cobod. We're just here making partnerships with people and contractors and working with people that are looking to build homes. So we've actually made some great contacts here. It's been a great show for us. And we're just here as a satisfied customer. So when Cobot came to us, we're only a four hour drive from here. When Cobot came to us and said the show had offered for them to do the exhibit here, uh, we just said yes, because we're well, well branded on this and we wanted to do it. And it's been a delightful show for us. We've actually built a lot of good relationships with other contractors, because between other contractors, people that are buying these machines, we're all in it together. And there's no, very few of them feel like there's competition. There's so many homes that need to get built in this country, it's just crazy, so no, it's, and once you bought one of these machines, you want to be able to be talking to other people that are doing it, learning from their experience of doing it. There's no secrets, it's just a matter of sharing everything with them. So that's what we were here for, and it's been great. And perfect weather, and uh, delightful, and printing every day. And we're headed back, uh, we're gonna load up tomorrow. We're headed back, we're, uh, I said about four hours from here, just north of Prescott, in Arizona. And we've actually got a, a house home pad that's already laid with the electrical and plumbing and everything in it for the next house we're going to do. So that we'll start building that in the next couple weeks. Thank you, Rob. You bet.